It was disgusting. <laughs> See, I always feel bad though. We're at the part of the interview now. We're sort of bursting bubbles. people's bubbles. And Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory facts that will ruin your childhood. For this list, we'll be going over trivia and other knowledge about Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory that may change the way you view the 1971 film, or else that are just interesting. Who can take a sunrise, sprinkle it with dew? Number 10. Marketing led to name change. Roald Dahl wrote Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, the children's book that this film is based on. Naturally, this begs the question, why the name change? Although some accounts suggest that the name change was due to the civil rights movement, Charlie being a racially charged name, it's more likely that the rebranding was because of marketing. And they said to me, do you know who Mr. Charlie is? And I said, no, but I have a feeling I'm going to find out. And he said, Mr. Charlie is the name they gave the, uh, the uh, boss on all southern plantations before the Civil War, he was called Mr. Charlie. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory was financed largely by the company Quaker Oats with the goal of creating a line of candy. And it made sense to tie the Wonka brand more to the movie. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Gee, what a key movie. I love that Willy Wonka. Yeah, but how about that Chocolate Factory? Oh, yeah. heavy. Sure wish I could make my own candy. The resulting candy bar wasn't a success though that had more to do with how easily it melted. Number 9. Wrong References Willy Wonka, like many other films, is filled with references to other parts of pop culture. Although most of it is recognizable, not all of it is correct. For instance, when Wonka opens his musical lock, Mrs. TV claims the composer to be Rachmaninoff when it's actually Mozart. Now, the combination. This is a musical lock. Rachmaninoff. Wonka himself references Shakespeare numerous times throughout the movie and sometimes gets the quote wrong. So shines a good deed in a weary world. The bard isn't the only writer he misquotes, however. Wonka also gets a line wrong from a poem called Sea Fever written by English poet John Macefield. Granted, in all of these cases, the characters being incorrect might be a conscious character choice, rather than an error on the filmmakers' parts. Meine Herrschaften, schenken Sie mir Ihre Aufmerksamkeit. That's not French. Sie kommen jetzt in den interessantesten und gleichzeitig geheimsten Raum meiner Fabrik. I can't take much more of this. Number 8. Real Knee Injury Veruca Salt is, to put it mildly, quite the pill. All right, where is it? Why haven't they found it? Veruca, sweetheart, I'm not a magician. Give me time. I want it now. What's the matter with those twerps down there? The spoiled brat is arguably the most deserving of the children on the tour that Wonka teaches his decidedly harsh lessons to. I want a bean feast. Oh, one of those. Cream buns and donuts and fruitcake with no nuts. So good you could go nuts. You're going to have all those things when you get home. Oh. No, no! Still, her actress actually suffered an injury that was unplanned by the candy kingpin. While in the chocolate room, Veruca can be seen smashing a chocolate egg on a rock to break it open. During filming, actress Julie Don Cole cut her knee when she fell on the rock, which was real. The injury can even be seen in subsequent scenes, and Cole apparently still has a scar. Number 7. Roald Dahl disowned the film. Roald Dahl is a complicated figure, and not just because of how dark his stories tend to be. It's all there, black and white, clear as crystal. You stole fizzy lifting drinks. You bumped into the ceiling, which now has to be washed and sterilized, so you get nothing. You lose. Good day, sir. But it's actually partly for this reason that Dahl reportedly did not care for this film adaptation of his book. Dahl reportedly told his friend Donald Sturrock, that he found the music added to the movie to be too upbeat. If you want to view paradise, simply look around and view it. Anything you want to do it, want to change the world, there's nothing to it. He was also critical of Gene Wilder in the title role, feeling that he lacked the edge needed to bring Wonka to life. It's also been reported that Dahl disliked the final film so much that he refused to grant rights to a sequel. By then, you'd become pompous and, and uh, uh, 
adult, grown up, and 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 you've lost all your jokiness. You know, you don't have any any, any, any and and so unless you are a kind of undeveloped uh, adult and you still have an enormous amount of childishness in you. Number six, Wonka's unpredictable behavior. Willy Wonka is a madcap genius of candy and utterly unpredictable in his actions, being soft-spoken one minute and shouting angrily the next. Wonka's mercurial nature also extended to Gene Wilder's performance of him. Reportedly, one of Wilder's conditions for taking the part was that he be allowed to do a somersault during his introduction, which the rest of the cast didn't know about, with some of their reactions to his fake fall being genuine. Wilder also surprised the cast with his maniacal performance during the boat ride, which terrified some of the actors so much that they didn't think he was acting. The danger must be growing for the rowers keep on rowing, and they're certainly not showing any signs that they are slowing! Number 5. Nazi Golden Ticket Winner The first part of the film follows the worldwide scramble to find the five golden tickets Willy Wonka hides in chocolate bars to allow five winners to go to his factory. It is a Wonka. Open it, Charlie. Let's see that golden ticket. Although Charlie Bucket dreams of going, his hopes seem to be dashed when the news announces that a millionaire in Paraguay has found the last ticket. Naturally, it's soon revealed to be a forgery. What many may not realize is that the man pictured is Martin Bormann, Adolf Hitler's secretary and a high-ranking Nazi party official. Here is the most recent picture available of the Happy Finder, the man who has finally Turn put an end. Although Bormann died in Germany, rumors persist that he fled to Paraguay, which is the origin of the joke. The filmmakers clearly overestimated how familiar people would be with Nazi party members. Can you imagine the nerve of that guy trying to fool the whole world? Oh, he really was a crook. Number 4. Post Wonka Blues While every departure of the misbehaving children is memorable in its own way, arguably the most renowned is that of Violet Beauregard. Well, I'm a gum chewer normally, but when I heard about these ticket things of Wonka's, I laid off the gum and switched to candy bars instead. Now, of course, I'm right back on gum. I chew it all day except at mealtimes when I stick it behind my ear. The champion gum chewer is unable to resist trying a gum that changes flavors while on the tour, and the unfinished product eventually turns her blue when she reaches the pie part. And it also inflates her to an enormous size. I don't care. Oh, I wouldn't do that. I really wouldn't. So long as it's gum, then that's for me. Violet, now don't you do anything stupid. Violet's embarrassing exit stayed with her actress after the fact, literally. While at school shortly after shooting the scene, actress Denise Nickerson's pores sweat out the leftover makeup, turning her blue all over again. Yikes. Somebody do something! Call a doctor! Stick her with a pin! She'll pop! It happens every time. They all become blueberries. You've really done it this time, haven't you, Wonka? Number 3. Wonka Wash Foam Willy Wonka's bizarre inventions aren't just limited to candy and other edibles. He's also done marvelous things with vehicles, too. Yeah, what's that they're filling it up with? Oh, ginger ale, ginger pop, ginger beer, beer bubbles, bubble aid, bubble cola, double cola, double bubble burpa cola, and all the crazy carbonated stuff that tickles your nose. The most on-brand of these is the Wonka-mobile. True to form, the fuel for this car is all manner of fizzy drinks, the byproduct of which is a copious amount of foam. During the visitor's short but unforgettable ride, the passengers and Wonka are all covered in the stuff. Despite its seeming fluffy and edible looking at first glance, anyone who's seen a fire extinguisher discharged couldn't help but notice the resemblance. And that's because that's exactly what it is. Since it aggravates the skin on contact, the actors had to receive medical treatment afterwards. Hey, Grandpa, what was that we just went through? Hasa wakano. Is that Japanese? No, that's Wonka Wash spelled backwards. Number two, the Chocolate River wasn't chocolate. Willy Wonka's chocolate factory is filled with delicious looking confections. However, most of what's shown on screen was not edible. The candy was made of cardboard or plastic, and the snozberry wallpaper tasted like wallpaper. The strawberries taste like strawberries. The snozberries taste like snozberries. A good rule of thumb is that unless you saw someone eat it, then it wasn't edible. Although that buttercup Gene Wilder takes a bite out of was actually wax. Most famous of all, though, is the Chocolate River. According to the actors, it was mostly water with coloring added to it, and it smelled and tasted horrible. Was the river really chocolatey? 
No, I'm sorry, it was water. It was water. <laughs> it was disgusting. <laughs> See, I always feel bad, though. We're at the part of the interview now. We're sort of just bursting bubbles. people's bubbles. And Other sources claim it was real, however. So maybe we can keep the dream alive a little longer. The lengths films go to to have a good on-screen effect, it's crazy. Especially older movies. Before we get to our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Wait till I get a real one. Colt 45. Pop won't let me have one yet, will you, Pop? Not till you're 12, son. I've got a perfect puzzle for you. Like the Oompa. Oompa, loompa, loompa Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Sinister Seat Numbers Willy Wonka is an eccentric chocolatier looking for someone to take over his business for him someday. He gives five children the chance to prove themselves. While he seems benevolent, he certainly has a darker side. And it's likely worse than some viewers notice on the first few times through. The crux of this is in Wonka's vehicles. His infamous boat on the Chocolate River only has room for himself and eight passengers, not the ten he started with. Similarly, his Wonka-mobile later on has just enough for the number of people left at that point. Is this all a production gaffe? or all part of Mr. Wonka's sinister scheme to eliminate his contestants by hook or crook until only one remains. You decide. The egg decator can tell the difference between a good egg and a bad egg. If it's a good egg, it's shined up and shipped out all over the world. But if it's a bad egg, down the chute. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.